Hey guys, today we're going to be going over some basic commands in Mathematica. These basic commands are going to be plot, manipulate, counterplot, con contour plot, and solve. So the first thing we're going to do is instantiate a function in Mathematica. So you can do that by saying a certain variable, say you want to have some function y of x. For example, this guy down here. So in Mathematica, the way you um, formalize an expression, you type the variable that is the independent, the dependent variable, um, first. So that's done just by saying, hey, say I want to have a function f of y. I'm going to say f, and then command input in Mathematica is often done with hard brackets. So these guys right here. So if I want to have a function f of y, I'll type f left hard bracket y underscore right hard bracket equals whatever you want, just something. So the reason you want to have um, an underscore to the right of the depend of the independent variable in this expression is because Mathematica knows that you're instantiating a function. And uh, this function f, the dependent variable, is dependent upon the independent variable y. So this f of y equals some function of y. So in order to plot these guys right here, you need to know the plot command. And that's below right here. So the plot command takes two inputs. And the first input is the stuff you want to graph. This, these, these things right here. And so the stuff you want to graph is and can be enclosed with curly braces. And curly braces in Mathematica denote a list. So you can make a list of stuff by like saying, hey, I want 3, 4, 2, 23, 45, and 3 in a list. Press Shift Enter. And the input, which is what the stuff you typed, will go through the kernel of Mathematica. So the kernel of, of Mathematica is all the, is the in the engine with with which it's stuff under the hood um, in Mathematica. So once you press Shift Enter, that's that allows you to input um, to have input in Mathematica and um, the main code areas. Once you have that, the output will be expressed. In order to make sure you cannot see the output, you can suppress it by pressing the semicolon button on your keypad and then pressing Shift Enter again, and the output will then be suppressed. So back into the plot command. The plot command, as I said, takes two inputs. These inputs are a list, or not a list, depending on how many you have. You could just have one. Um, functions, you want to graph. And then the second mandatory input is a domain upon which you want to see the graph. So right now, our y of x is ax squared plus bx plus c, general form for a quadratic. y prime of x is simply the derivative of that. So And that is shown right here. You can do this with Mathematica with the d command. The d is taking a derivative. That's all it does. You can have a second derivative taken in Mathematica by simply putting a comma and then another x after it. This says Mathematica, hey, I want you to take the derivative of this function with respect to x and then with respect to x again. There's another way you can do this also. You can have a list. And in this list, you have the variable you want to different, differentiate with respect to, in this case it would be x, comma, number of times you want to, differ, you want to differentiate the function that you want to differentiate, that you're interested in. And you would close this list, and the two inputs for derivative command have been satisfied. So right now, what I'm going to do is press Shift Enter on this first function right here, y of x. Once y has turned from blue to black, you know it has been instantiated. Notice that a, b, and c are still blue. Shift Enter for y prime and y two prime. Notice that they turn both to black. And then I press shift enter here in the first plot command. The graph nothing. Why is that? You'll see later. But right below is basically the reason why. So, so A, B, and C 
are still blue in this expression. They, they weren't instantiated at any point in our program. So right now we have to instantiate them for A, B, and C going to pass values of 1, 2, and 3 respectively. Shift enter. The input um, is the, the output is suppressed the semicolon. And the input, the A, B, and C turn blue turn black from blue to let you know, hey, this variable is good to go. It's has something called to it. And then unpress shift enter for the second plot commands, and lo and behold, there's something to see. All right, so the next thing you're going to do is go over the manipulate function. So the, the, the manipulate command allows you to vary a certain parameter in, a, in an equation or whatever, really. And you can see the effects that that, that change in that parameter has on the output of some whatever you want, it really. So right now, I'm going to go down here. Press shift down. So the clear command, all it does basically is it wipes the variables that you want to clear, clear basically. And that's all it does. Just hey, I want you to erase what you have in A, B, and C. That's what this command right here is telling you to it's telling Mathematica to do. The next command is simply the function capital Y. Capital Y can be is a function x, a, b, and c. y prime is a function of the same things. y2 prime is a function of the same things again. So the derivatives are taking are taking with respect to the same variable x. However, this big function y is dependent upon a, b, and c as well. a, b, and c are going to be variables in this problem. So when we use the plot command in this case, y has to be Big Y has to be passed values for A, B, and C. The first manipulate command simply has Y, Y prime, y, and Y double prime all graphed um, on one plot. And that's done with the, list, with the list structure again. You can see the curly braces enclosing all three of these plots right here. So the next input for plot commands is the domain. After this comes the final input command for manipulate. So the last manipulate command basically says, hey, I want you to vary b from minus 10 to 10 in steps of 1. And that's basically all this is telling mathematically to do right now. So when I press shift enter, what we should get is an output that looks like a plot from above. However, it's encircled with this light gray structure right here. And just like gray structure, there is B. B can be varied. By pressing this little plus right here, and then pressing play, the values of B will change in incremental from minus 10 to 10. Let me see the effect this has on the graph right here. However, in this command, boundaries of the graph change. And sometimes that's not, not something you want to have. So you can hard code the range Commands in Mathematica have many options. Plot range is an option of plot. In order to see what the options of different commands are, all you have to do is press question mark, question mark, and then plot command. Press shift enter, and all the options of that command will be shown. In addition to the structure with which you would have the main input for a command. So in this case, that is the expression f, and then the bounds. And that is done if you want. If you don't want to see all the options down here, that can be done with just simply one question mark. The third manipulate plot command shows plot legends, and that's simply labeling the, the graph pretty much. So when I shift v in this case, the static plot range will still be the same. 
However, we also see the labeling of all these graphs right here. So next part, we're going to do contour plot. Contour plots plot implicit functions of x and y. For the plot command, you have to have some function as a function specifically of something else. So it's an explicit solution for a function. For the, with the contour plot, it's a little different. You can have implicit solutions defined. So here I'm going to instantiate all the variables from a to g. And then what I'm going to do is have this command input. Notice that there's no output from this comments right here. Comments in Mathematica are done with parentheses and an asterisk, a star. So the input of this, of the output of this guy is just going to ignore everything that's in that comment. The comment can be a hundred lines long and Mathematica won't care about it. It, it just ignore it. So the list of options for all these, for this command right here, contour plot, grows and grows. And for each command, you can see how it changes. Here, for example, besides plot legends, which is shown above in this final nitpick command up here, we have axes true. So an axis just say, hey, Mathematica, I want you to show the axis in this plot. And Mathematica's like, sure, I'll do that. The last command or last option of the contour plot command that is shown here is axis label. And that simply labels x and y. You can call it whatever you want, really. So the next thing we're going to do is solve equations, not graphically, but symbolically, or symbolically for Mathematica. We're telling Mathematica to solve it for us, and we're going to do some stuff with that. So right now we have a to b instantiated again for our second equation. And then we have line one and line two. Line one and line two are simply saying, hey, Mathematica, line one is going to be ax plus by. Line two is cx plus dy. Intersection point is set equal to solve commands for both line one and line two. And they are equal to f and g, respectively. Solve takes two in inputs as a command. The left-hand side is shown for the expression you want to solve. And the variables are the second input. The third input can also be done as well, but that's only over certain domains. And that's not necessary in this problem. So I'm going to press shift enter here, and we're going to get a value for the intersection point. And now when we just call intersection point, we'll get what the solve command did. So in Mathematica, there are two ways to express, well, two ways to use the equal sign. There is the, the single equal sign, which is simply setting the right-hand side equal to the left-hand side. And the double equal sign, which you use in solving equations for like nd solve, d solve, solve. Um, and you can read more about it online or further in this notebook right here. So this contour plot right now, this command is going to try to graph this thing out. However, there's going to be an error for this, at least somewhat. So right now, we're saying this contour plot, hey, I want you to graph ax plus by equals equals f, and cx plus dy equals equals g with, this, with these boundaries right here. And with all these options in this contour plot command being done, and those are plot legends, axes, axes label, and epilog. An epilog is just saying, hey, this is where the intersection point is. So, as I said earlier, the brown warnings are like warnings and errors in Mathematica, saying something's up. Um, but if there's still an output, then you're still good to go. However, 
there's some error in the code that you should fix later on. The next command we're going to run is basically the same thing, so it's a little different. The there's a scale factor here, and what that does is simply scaling the text pretty much. The next thing that's going to happen is we're going to grab out of that list we saw for intersection point, this guy up here, the x and y values for the intersection point. And that's done by saying, hey, we're going to use a rule right here. And I want you, using this rule, to replace what you have as an x value with whatever x goes to under this rule. And that's simply what this slash dot does. It's saying, hey, Mathematica, I want you to replace x with whatever x goes to in this expression. Within lists, you can call elements of that list via saying, hey, intersection point. I want you to call the, from the first row what, what's in your first row first column. And that is x goes to negative 5 thirds. Same thing is done for y. Mathematical rows are counted first, matrices, and columns second. So when I sign statute this code right here, we should get minus 5 thirds and 7 thirds for x intersection and y intersection. It's just plain numerical values. So then contour plot is still done again. And instead of saying x goes to negative 5 thirds and y goes to 7 thirds, the numerical values for those numbers are placed as an ordered pair of x and y. And then again in this command as well. Then we can use a manipulate command in order to change this point of intersection. However, this does not update the intersection point because those are static things in code. The x intersection and the y intersection do not depend on anything within the manipulate command. They only depend upon the solve commands or the solve command that was used further above in this code. So now what we're going to do is do the same thing again, except account for that stuff changing. So I'm going to solve the intersection point as a function of b. Because b is the only variable that has not been instantiated at this point, and at least for this code right here. So you can see x goes to 3 plus b over minus 1 plus 2b, and y goes to 7 over minus 1 plus 2b. And you can see the x intersection and the y intersection uh, values being called as well. And that can be suppressed with the, with the semicolon right here. So then, manipulate, plan, manipulate plot is done again, and the intersection point changes as a function of b. And right there, that red part uh, was just the, the code screwing up. Um, there was something going on with it. And in order to fix, and that happened because of something going wrong with the code. Sometimes Mathematica um, wets the bed, as you would say, and because of that, you have to be careful of method with, with how you use your code. Next thing I'm going to do is plot or not plot, find the intersection point as a function of a, b, c, f, and g. And that's the end of that document. So, so far we've reviewed the plot commands, the, the manipulate commands, the contour plot commands, and the solve command. In addition to several miscellaneous other ones, like What's a single? What's a single equal sign for? What's a double equal sign for? 
SQL equal lines for signed is for logical equivalents, or at least setting up stuff saying the right hand side equal to the right hand side. Double equal sign is used for solving stuff in expressions and you solve, you solve, solve. Um, we also have gone over several options in plot, contour plot, and how to access those options. So have a fantastic day.